Hello, and welcome to another episode of Podcast DX, the show that brings you interviews with people just like you whose lives were forever changed by a medical diagnosis. I'm Lita. And I'm Frosty the Snowman. Okay. Ron is off scuba diving this week, and collectively we are the hosts of Podcast DX. On today's show, we are talking about winter safety. Oh yes, winter safety. Uh, Well, since it's almost winter time here in the Midwest, it's a pretty important topic. So let me start by giving a definition of hypothermia according to the Mayo Clinic. Okay. Hypothermia is a potentially dangerous drop in body temperature usually caused by prolonged exposure to cold temperatures. The risk of cold exposure increases as the winter months arrive. But if you're exposed to cold temperatures on a spring hike or a capsized boat, you can still be at risk of hypothermia. Normal body temperature averages 98.6 degrees. With hypothermia, core body temperature drops below 95 degrees. In severe hypothermia, core body temperature can drop to 82 degrees or lower. Chilly. Well, after doing some research on the topic, um, you know just how dangerous hypothermia can be. For instance, it turns out that the time it takes from falling into a frozen lake and becoming unconscious can be less than 15 minutes. Okay. And even in warmer water, you can have hypothermia. Only in water temps above 80 degrees um, can you actually survive for more than four hours. Okay. And they say um, indefinitely, but I don't think people really are know staying what the in the was. water. Right. And I think it would eventually affect your skin. Okay. Uh, well, let's cover some of the symptoms of hypothermia right after you go and get Gigi a cookie, or another handful of cookies. That's a great idea. Hypothermia symptoms may include shivering, and the shivering can be pretty intense, although it may stop after the body temperature drops to a certain level. You may suffer from slurred speech, mumbling, small sh- or slow, shallow breathing, a um, clumsiness, weakened pulse. Uh, you might have a lack of coordination, feel drowsy or tired. Um, you may suffer from some memory loss or have confusion. You may even lose consciousness. And an infant's bright red cold skin is an indicator of hypothermia. Okay. And what do you do if you if you have it or you see somebody that has these symptoms? Call 911. But first, okay. let's talk about what not to do. Do not immerse the um, individual in warm water or warm the extremities, you know, the legs and arms, before warming the trunk of the body itself. And do not administer alcohol or cigarettes to help warm the person. That does not work. Okay. Um, so, yeah, when and, in doubt. Okay. And what should you do? Call 911 or your local emergency services. Okay. And if you can, move the person inside or at least out of um, the wind. If uh, the sun is out, you might want to move them into the sun. Insulate them or keep them off of the ground because that will leach, leach more heat from the body. And protect the head and the neck area if it's windy. And remove um, wet clothing. If they're in wet clothing, replace with warm, dry clothing or blankets. Okay. And if it becomes necessary and you are qualified to do so, perform CPR. Are there any risk factors for hypothermia? Yes. Um, the elderly, infants, children, um, all of those individuals are at a higher risk. Okay. And those without adequate heating, clothing, or food are obviously at a higher risk. Okay. People with um, mental illness, people who are outdoors for extended periods of time, um, perhaps for work or when if they're at play, um, and people in cold weather whose judgment is impaired by alcohol or drugs, those people are at a higher risk of getting and um, hypothermia. Okay. Is there a difference between hypothermia and frostbite? Yes. Frostbite is um, an injury caused by the skin actually freezing and crystallizing. The water crystallizes. Okay. As well as um, damage to the underlying tissues. And this is most often most common and often seen in um, extremities like the toes, the nose, the fingers, the ears, your, the cheeks, and the chin. Okay. And exposed skin in cold, windy weather is most vulnerable to frostbite. So, um, but you know, any skin that's even cl- covered by gloves, boots, or other clothing can potentially get frostbite if you're out exposed um, for just too because long of the temperature, too right? Cold of a temperature. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Now I see that there's a chart here online from the Mayo Clinic that says symptoms of frostbite are 
cold skin and a prick a prickly feeling mm-hmm. of the skin. Right. Numbness, a red, white, bluish white, or gray yellow skin. So I guess yes, any any skin. odd color to your skin. Huh? Yeah, any that it's not normally. Okay. Yeah. Um, a hard or yeah. waxy looking skin. Yep. And then a person could appear clumsy due to joint and muscle stiffness and blistering that will happen after rewarming. That can happen in severe cases. Yes. And then if if it's really bad, the tissue can actually die and amputation could become necessary. Sure. You often hear about um, individuals stuck on mountaintops or in um, extreme right. weather end up, and they end up losing fingers, toes, yeah. nose, ears. Yep. Okay. Um, but prevention, I think, is really the key. You want to address according to what you're going to be doing and the temperature outside and limit your time um, it, out in the elements. Okay. Well, one good way to be proactive is to have an emergency kit in your car. Sure. Uh, in the winter, you should have a bag of salt or sand to help with traction if you're stuck on ice. You should keep your gas tank at least half full to avoid ice in the lines. You should have a flashlight with batteries. You should have blankets and extra winter clothing. An ice scraper with a snow brush to clear the uh, windows. Right. Um, cloth or paper towels to help clear the windows if they get smeared up. you mm-hmm. got to be able to see. Yeah. Uh, a small snow shovel. A uh, windshield washer fluid that's treated with antifreeze to keep it from freezing on the glass or in the tubes. Mm-hmm. Jumper cables in case you have a dead battery. And my idea preventative is before winter even hits, you should really have your battery checked to make sure that you got a good start every day, no matter how cold it gets. Right. You probably also want to just do a general check of your vehicle, make right. sure your tires right. are... Everything's ready. Yeah. yeah. Everything's good. Yeah. That's a good idea. And it's... Um, yep. Okay. Um, and those are good tips if you're going to be traveling by vehicle mm-hmm. in the winter weather. Right. Uh, but what about... What if you're going to be on foot? You know, um, we... Did you know that some people actually run... In the winter? Yeah, like Trevor. Yeah, yeah. and his uh, his cross-country team at Downers Grove North, they run every day. They don't care how cold it is. They do, however, do smart things like layering clothes. Sure. Um, they always wear hats since most heat is lost through your head. That's a that's actually a fallacy, but that's okay. Or a misnomer. Oh, wait, I read that. Yeah, no, it's not true. Oh, my goodness, I read that. Okay. Uh, and they want to keep their ears warm. Well, yeah, you don't want to lose your ears. Okay, so hats are good for that. Yeah, that's okay. always good. Uh, they also want to make sure that they're visible, so they either use a headlamp. I think at least one person in each group will have a headlamp. That's good. They use polarized sunglasses to keep uh, their eyes from freezing. Your eyes will freeze, right, if you're running? Um, I, I, well, I, I think it just keeps the wind off of your eyes. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, they have reflective tape that could be added to the clothing or it's built into the clothing and obviously gloves. Right, and actually if you wear mittens, your fingers will stay warmer than if they're just in gloves. Okay. Um, and I guess if you really insist on running in these frigid temperatures, um, you know that you can run indoors as well. Yes, uh, on a treadmill. Yes, or a track. I know it's not as, That's you know, right. yeah. Um, Because this way you also won't uh, have any potential slips and falls on ice. Um, Being smart about protective clothing um, for your extremities to protect them from frostbite is vital. And, of course, um, you know my pet peeve. Uh, You're implying pet safety? Yep, absolutely. Even though they have their own fur, built-in fur coats, it's still very cold outside for your pet, especially if it's wet, wet and cold. Um, like if it's sleeting or, or it's cold and there's rain or snow. And there are jackets that you can strap around your dog that will limit the exposure that the, the, you know, to getting wet and help um, prevent that. Right. And just doing that can help a dog help maintain its body temperature and keep it from dropping. Um, they also need to stay hydrated. So do you. And um, if you keep your dog outside... For any length of time and the pet's water dish isn't heated, they can't drink and then they'll become dehydrated. And dehydrated pets are more likely to, um, or are at higher risk for hypothermia. Okay. And um, you want to make sure that with, you know, if you're using antifreeze in your windshield washing fluid or in your vehicle, that you clean that up because it tastes and smells sweet, which pets might be attracted to that, but it is a deadly poison. Right. And um, lastly, you want to be really cautious with your pet's paws. They can get frostbite. Just, okay. And also, they can um, crack and bleed because of the you know cold, dry air. So you want to make sure you take extra care with them. And um, just remember, dogs have been bred for centuries for specific traits and taken out of their native 
land and native area. That's why they're not called wolves anymore? Right. So, um, yeah, they're not made to fend for themselves or live outdoors on their own. They don't have the rough coats? They, yeah, well, there are some dogs that have double coats, but still. But, yeah. yeah, but we have breeds of dog here in the United States from areas that they are not native to. So some dogs, you have to be especially careful that they don't overheat in the summer. Right. And other dogs, you have to make, be careful that they don't get freeze too cold. Right. in the cold. Yeah, dogs are not meant to be left outside. They are no longer wild animals. Good advice. And like any other time of the year, you have to make sure that your pets have an ID on the collar and keep poisonous plants out of reach. So like in the winter, you might have poinsettias or mistletoe. Right. Those are poisonous. Right. Good point. Good point. Well, at least we touched on some of the important points for winter safety. Um, we'll make sure that there are links on our resource page on the website okay. for this week's episode. So if you want to find out more information, uh, please check out the website. Okay. And uh, let's wrap it up because I'm ready to go warm up and I just got um, cold talking about this topic. Okay. Well, if our listeners have any questions or comments related to today's show, they can contact us always at podcastdx at yahoo.com. Through our website, podcastdx.com, on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, or Instagram. Yeah, Siri, <laughs> subscribe to Podcast DX. Right. Um, and if you have a moment to spare, please give us a review wherever you get your podcasts. We'd like to know what you think. And as always, please keep in mind that this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regime. And never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard on this podcast. And until next week. <laughs>